Good evening. I hope you enjoyed the day at ECIO. It is my pleasure to welcome you to this Meet the PI session and to introduce you Professor Philip Pereira. He will explain us about the CMR, the registry, uh, including patients treated with uh, uh, ablation with the imprint system and in uh, colorectal liver meds. Welcome, Philip, and thank you for uh, showing your results. Yes, thank you very much, uh, Laura, and uh, everybody. Welcome to the ECO 2021 online. My pleasure for, for me to present the, uh, the CMR registry study, which is registered in a clinical trials .gov. Um By the way, it is important that all studies are registered. Um, this study will offer some insights in the, in the efficacy and, and, and safety of microwave ablation by using the, a new generator, the imprint generator, which is generator of the fourth generation of microwave ablation device. The aim of the study is uh, to use as a real use of uh, microwave ablation in patients with uh, liver metastasis from colorectal cancer. We'll especially look at the control of colorectal metastatic tumor. And uh, CMR will be and is already uh, a multi-center, non-randomized, European-wide observational study. And we aim to enroll uh, 1,000 patients over two or three years. And uh, as important as a recruitment, we will have a three years follow-up. The project and management of data uh, is performed by the research department of uh, CERSE. Just two slides that's also very important to know for everybody who want to start uh, a registry study is that uh, as interventional oncologists, like surgeon, we have a challenge to to provide the uh, medical community with prospective randomized clinical trial because these prospective randomized clinical trials are always with blinding, with uh, large sample size, and with valid outcomes. And you can imagine that uh, blinding is not possible when you perform an intervention like surgeons. Uh, large sample size mean uh, high cost, and also uh, we have not the support from the pharmaceutical industry for that. And how do you want to evaluate clinical outcomes in this patient who will have benefit from uh, other therapies? You can imagine after ablation, maybe chemoembolization or radioembolization or uh, systemic treatment. So, clinical outcome, very difficult to define. And uh, we are not alone in this with the thinking. Uh, very good, very well published paper have underlined the importance of real world data and the importance of large registry. So the CMR is a registry study uh, under the sponsoring from CERSE. CERSE is uh, representing by the executive board as a sponsor. All the administrative data will be uh, worked by the master administrator, that is a research department of CERSE. All scientific and medical questions are uh, the work from the steering committee. We have an inter interdisciplinary steering committee. All data will be captured in an electronic data system coming from principal investigator in each hospital. It is an overview of the interdisciplinary steering committee uh, with two co-chairs, Professor Thierry Dobert and myself. And you see we have uh, with some well-known interventional oncologists also some well-known uh, surgeons for this study. Just a couple of slides to, uh, to the main factor of this study, the inclusion criteria. Of course, these are patients with known CRC with colorectal liver metastasis that are either proven histologically or diagnostic by imaging. These are for hospital using the new imprint microwave ablation system. Uh, the indication for ablation should be done by a multidisciplinary tumor board the maximum number of metastases is nine, close to the design from the clock trial. 
and the intention should be uh, to treat all liver lesion. The maximum of, of, uh, of uh, metastase, uh, maximum size of metastase does not exceed, should not exceed three centimeters. Just a couple of slides to primary and secondary objective. We have two primary objectives. The first is to look at the efficacy per lesion. That means we will look at the tumor control at 12 months in a per lesion basis. And we will look at safety by using the CTTA 5.0. The secondary objective are two type. One is the efficacy with clinical outcome survival, hepatic disease-free survival, time to untreatable progression by thermal ablation. Also the possibility if the patient may have chemotherapy vacation, and we will look at the quality of life. Cost effectiveness is an important aspect for further discussion with regulatory, with uh, reimbursement institute. We'll look at the hospital stay complication rate, the wound time, ablation time, use of general anesthesia, etc. This is a timeline for the CMR. You see that there is a baseline, of course, where we have to look at the patient history, laboratory data, and quality of life, the treatment by himself. And so we will look at the treatment data. We will collect, of course, the complication. And the first follow-up, we will come back to the quality of life after ablation and the follow-up in the first year every three months with collection of complication, other treatment, imaging, etc. As you probably know, we have already started the recruitment and we have uh, 31 sites that have been initiated by our research department. Active sites are 22. We are working now with 12 different countries in Europe sites that are contracting are 15 and we have already at the, the 10th of march already enrolled 158 patients this is a curve and you see the curve at the beginning like in every study the curve is not exponential but is growing very fast and also as all of you performing study we have to deal with the pandemic situation to summarize the cmr will be one of the most comprehensive and prospective data collection for ablation of colorectal metastases in the liver. We have a plane from different manuscripts already this year. We will address the health economic assessment and we will look at the methodological paper describing also pro and contra for the study and advantage to perform this kind of registry. By the way, the study is open also for recruitment and we're still accepting new sites. So don't hesitate to take contact uh, with the research department as you can look at uh, the homepage of CERC. So thank you very much for your attention and uh, very happy to answer your question. Thank you, Philip, for uh, uh, this presentation and for highlighting the importance of uh, um, of conducting this kind of study. You, uh, of course, well, very well uh, underlined the limitation of randomized controlled trials in the setting of our therapies, just like for the surgical therapies. And I, I am sure this is the right way to go to uh, have uh, uh, important results on the role of ablation on uh, metastasis, liver metastasis. Thank you. Uh, what about the management of a limited extrapathic disease? I know this is not an exclusion criteria for the CMR. I mean, no. small lung nodules. I don't want to, to give all the study design, but uh, we decided, the interdisciplinary uh, steering committee decided to, to include, and that it is based on the, the, the literature, to include patients with up to five lung metastases. And a classical Exclusion criteria is, of course, uh, cerebral metastasis. So we definitely do not accept cerebral metastasis. And the only metastasis uh, that are accepted are, are lung metastasis if, if uh, they can be treated by either ablation or, or resection. OK. Thank you very much. And uh, uh, what about? Uh, uh, 
the role of surgery in this patient. Of course, this will be this uh, will be uh, uh, not considered uh, for this yeah. patient, but very often in the clinical practice, when you include patients with up to nine liver mats, there are some, some ones that are easy to resect and some that are easy to ablate. What is your suggestion to deal with these patients? Thank you, nice question. Uh, because it was it was a reason for a lot, a lot of discussion inside the steering committee. And uh, as I showed you before, we have two very well-known surgeons in, in the committee. So that will be, that will be um, a, a good point to make a sub-analysis. We will have 1,000 patients. We do not exclude ablation performed by surgeon intraoperatively or performed by interventional oncologists intraoperatively. Yeah, that's sure. We will not also, we will not exclude patients that have surgery and ablation in the session. Uh, and, and you can imagine when we have 1,000 patients, we will have some patients with, with these two situations, uh, allowing us to make, to make, uh, to make sub-analysis to see if, if there is some benefit, efficacy, safety, et cetera. So this patient will be included uh, in this study. This is a very wise decision, I think, because this is real life. Uh, we face, yeah. we uh, treat this kind of patient in everyday life. So uh, I, I agree with, of course, with the choice of the, of the steering committee. Yeah, but it was not, uh, it, it's, you have to look at the data and we have so many data by, that demonstrated that the combination surgical resection plus ablation allow you, allows you to, to increase the number of patient you can treat with a curative intention. So uh, it's, it's very important first to have real life data and close to the what you see every day, you discuss with your surgeon and there is so many patients who cannot have surgery because too much lesion in both lob. Uh, they, they cannot have only ablation because one or two metastases are too large for ablation, in my opinion. Remember three centimeters is the maximum we, we allow. Uh, but by combining both, you increase the number of patients you can curatively treat. And it, it is the best way, of course, a personalized medicine. And another, another wise uh, uh, choice you, you did is to choose for uh, the, the threshold of 3CM due to the well-known limitation. And this was a problem in past studies and probably brought uh, not so good results for ablation because we, we were treating the wrong patients. So uh, mm. this, again, was a, a, a difficult decision or was there a, an agreement in the steering committee? It was a long discussion, of course, but uh, you you remember uh, probably the, the data from the two retrospective analyses of AORTC clinical studies that have demonstrated that up to three centimeters, uh, the local recurrence rate, what is that is a challenge for for uh, ablation, also for atypical resection, the local recurrence rate was the same for colorectal liver metastasis up to three centimeters and a slightly difference uh, up to four centimeters. But uh, we, we maintain the three centimeters because you, you know that we have to ablate with safety margin and depending on tumor biology, safety margin should be at least six to 10 millimeters. So three centimeters, I believe. Uh, it's it's a aim for this study here. Yeah. So I think uh, you really uh, designed a very good uh, uh, registry, and I would like to congratulate again and uh, to wish you uh, good luck for the recruitment of the patient, and again uh, to uh, welcome any new center to join the group and to increase the number and. Uh, uh, the uh, increase the velocity of accrual to have uh, very soon very good results. Thank, Thank you, you very, very much. much.